Greetings guys, and welcome to our first library seminar. In this seminar, we'll be taking a second look at play cards, and similar to our Nightmare Zone, we'll be testing the effectiveness of all incendiaries, explosives, and placeable slash mines in the Lethal Zone. Presenting with me today is my TA Mascara, and my Apprentice Junior. Hello guys, I'm happy to see you back. Now London, I understand that this will be a two-part seminar. We'll not only be looking at the effectiveness of offensive measures, but also develop a health system for play cards. Let's not keep everyone waiting. Junior? Alright, so yes, I will be testing all explosives and incendiaries except for Independence Day Pyrotechnics and the Anniversary Cake. With these combustibles, I will be determining the percentage of damage each one inflicts to allow us to accurately determine what combination of combustibles can kill a heart and perhaps be used as a point of reference for all of you. A good amount of math will be involved with this discussion, so pay attention. Well, without further delay, we'll get started first with soda can bombs. In the lethal zone, they cost 3 units of ammo and 20 parts. Then we'll do pipe bombs, molotovs, and then fuel bombs.
So we'll set the premise and assume that Plague Hearts have 100 units of HP. Now the Sodican Bombs and Molotovs required 15 units before taking the heart down, which would mean that they inflict at the very least 6.6666667% damage each, which is 1 15th of 100. But London, what makes you so sure that the damage of the soda can bombs are not overcompensating? Meaning that they don't add up to go beyond 100. Hang on, Mascara. Our pipe bombs took a clean 11 units, implying that they inflict 9.09090909% damage, and our fuel bombs had a very similar outcome, of course provided that one allows the flames to burn out completely. Now, the only way to determine whether any of these throwables are doing the percentage outlined is to use a drone strike. Yes, you demonstrated this in the last Plague Heart discussion. To destroy a Plague Heart, one required a drone strike and three soda can bombs, or two pipe bombs, or two fully burned out fuel bombs. I think I see where you're going with this. If it takes three soda can bombs with a drone strike, then that means the drone strike is at the very least equivalent to 12 soda can bombs, or 12 multiplied by 6.66666667, which would give us 80. So drone strikes, so far, inflict 80% damage, right? So far, but we must take into consideration the other two throwables. If the drone strike actually inflicted 80% damage, then it would take three pipe bombs or three fuel bombs because they each do approximately 9.1% damage, which multiplied by two would create 18.2% damage, which would not be equivalent to 100% if added on with the 80. This automatically means that the drone strike must be inflicting at least 81.818181% damage or 82% for short but I don't recommend rounding these numbers, as this will be important later on. Ah, with this in mind, the soda can bombs will still require 3 units after a drone strike, as 6.7 times 2 is equivalent to 13.4, meaning just one more would be required to make 20.1, since 13.4 plus 82 would only equal 95.4 out of 100. So with these numbers currently ascertained, let's move on to the other explosives. We still have box vines, military grenades, and C4. Let's start with the box vines first. In this example, we'll only be using the whistling box vines, as they are the least buggy and expensive.
Alright, so with my explosions nicely spaced out, I can determine that box mines required 8 uses to take down the heart. This implies that one box mine inflicts 12.5% damage. But to make sure that we control for any overcompensating damage, we knew from the previous class that one drone strike and two box mines would eliminate a heart. So in theory, one drone strike, which is 82%, plus one box mine, 12.5%, will equate to 94.5%, meaning that only one soda can bomb should suffice in eliminating a heart almost perfectly. Well, I'm glad you're catching on, Mascara. Now, these experiments will look a bit messy, but this is all in the name of science, so bear with us. So I think it is safe to determine that box mines inflict 12.5% damage on a given heart, and since grenades are explosive and took the same quantity, they can be treated as equals. Moving on to C4, this one took 3 units, and just to save on time, Willy Pete grenades had also taken 3 units. Now I know what you're going to say, London. This would imply that C4 and Willy Pete grenades do at least 33.33333 damage, right? Well, yes, but we don't know if the damage is overcompensating or not, and they could be inflicting up to 49% damage, which would still require a third unit to finish off the heart. So to control for this, I decided to use one C4 on a heart, one Willy Pete on another, while using soda can bombs for the remaining damage. Based on this experiment, both combustibles required 10 soda can bombs to supplement the required damage to finish off the heart. And as we had determined earlier, soda can bombs inflict 6.66666667% damage, so multiplying by 10 would give us 66.6666667% damage. 100 minus this number would give us 33.33333, both C4 and the Willy P grenade had the same outcome. Is that all of them now? We still have a few more to cover, and two of them will be very important. We have military mines, pursuit mines, which are not craftable, napalm, and thermite.
Now, before we get into the control experiments, in our last class, I had stated that one napalm and or one thermite will suffice with a drone strike. That was a mistake on my end. Now, to my surprise, Thermite had taken 7 fully burnt out units, which means it inflicts approximately 14.258% damage. Meanwhile, Napalm had taken 8 units, putting it in the same grouping as military grenades and box binds. Wait a second, London. I vaguely remember you saying in the Nightmare Zone that Napalm was slightly stronger than Thermite, since Thermite has a longer burn time, but both required four units to take down a heart. Although this is a true statement, Thermite does have a longer burn time, and when comparing Thermite with C4 in the past, Thermite continued to burn even when the heart died, meaning that more damage was left to be done, while Napalm had to be fully burned out. So yes, they both took the same units, but with damage over time, the time aspect matters just slightly more. Napalm will hit harder, but Thermite will hit longer, which evidently will do more damage than Napalm eventually. So anyway, to control for the landmine's actual damage, four mines were used against a heart since five will kill it. This would imply 20% damage per mine, but after experimenting with the soda can bombs, it only took two units to inflict the remaining damage. This would mean that the mines are inflicting anywhere between 22 and 23% damage. And for those wondering why they cannot be inflicting 21% is because the addition would not add up to 100%. Now, just to demonstrate how crucial these minimal percentages are, I decided to perform one more experiment with 8 fuel bombs, 1 box mine, and 1 thermite. 8 fuel bombs will bring us to 72.7272%, 1 box mine will add 12.5%, and one thermite will add 14.258%. This will bring our damage to approximately 99.48%, but with our numbers, the heart shouldn't die. Let's check it out. Wow, so the numbers really don't lie. With each of the combustibles used, the heart required only two close combat melee strikes from a survivor that did not even have full close combat skill. 
But regardless, even if the damage percentages are slightly off, I think they are evidently close enough for reliable use. Now one more thing before we adjourn. I'm not sure if there is a difference with Plague Heart health and the number of Plague Hearts in a given map. If Plague Hearts are stronger based on the starting number of hearts, then these numbers may be slightly altered, as in they may require um, a bit more buffing with extra explosives or incendiaries or less, depending on how many hearts you have. But through each of these experiments, I had used two different lethal communities, one with 36 hearts and another with 34, and I have not been able to notice any differences, but I would be glad to hear from you guys on the discussion boards. I've heard of some communities starting with up to 41 hearts and others as low as 31, and I'm not really sure if these numbers would be the exact same in those communities. Well, just to summarize the damage numbers for anyone that got lost, soda can bombs and molotovs inflict 6.6666666% damage, fuel bombs and pipe bombs inflict 9.09090909%, thermite inflicts approximately 14.258%, box mines inflict 12.5%, C4 inflicts 33.33333, along with the Willy Peak grenades. Napalm inflicts 12.5, as well as grenades. And military landmines and pursuit mines inflict between 22 and 23% damage. Thank you for the summation, Mascara. Perhaps we'll cover the other projectiles another time. Maybe. Otherwise, though, that is all this onion. And this onion. That is all these onions have to say. Thanks for attending, guys, and I'll see you at our next seminar. Bye, guys. Use your knowledge well, okay? <laughs> <laughs>